In all, humans cumulatively released some 8 billion tons of carbon into the atmosphere last year. Raising its levels of CO2 to 383 parts per million, a 37% increase over pre-industrial levels. We're adding carbon now to the atmosphere at a rate which is unprecedented within recent geological history, at such a rate that it overwhelms the natural capacity of the Earth's system to absorb it. Mark Linus is a journalist and National Geographic grantee who has written extensively about the effects of carbon in the atmosphere. It's such an interesting experiment to scientists because it's, it's really pushing the, the Earth's temperatures and the Earth's climate out of kilter beyond any, any kind of uh, natural variations that we've seen in the past before. Already, many scientists believe the frequency of severe weather around the world is changing because of current levels of CO2 emissions. Warmer air holds more water vapor and increases evaporation, which means more rain in areas that have a lot of water and less in areas without it. The Murray-Darling Basin in southern Australia has been scorched by drought since 2001. The basin, which covers an area as large as France and Spain combined, constitutes three quarters of the country's irrigated land. And last year, most of its water stores dropped to critical levels. Water restrictions, withering crops, and food shortages could soon cost Australia billions. And last year, severe droughts affected every continent except Antarctica. And so did associated wildfires. To create the perfect conditions for a really severe firestorm, you need to have very high temperatures, you need to have strong winds, and you need to have very dry conditions. Now, these are conditions which have been occurring more and more across the globe's surface. In Greece, high temperatures and lack of rain created tinderbox conditions that allowed wildfires to char an estimated 5% of the country and kill dozens. The blazes, visible from space, nearly destroyed the site of the first Olympic Games, and officials say recovery could take decades. In the United States, fires burned through some 200,000 hectares of Southern California and forced more than half a million residents out of their homes. And in Paraguay, satellite images show some 400,000 hectares of land were scorched, the worst in the country's history. Spin the earth to wetter climes, and we find increased temperatures and evaporation may have also affected the other extreme last year. In the United Kingdom, the River Severn washed over its banks, leaving hundreds stranded and tens of thousands without electricity or water for days. I experienced it right here in Oxford that um, the, the intensity of the rainfall was something which I've never experienced before. It was almost like a monsoon. Halfway around the world, the August and September monsoons submerged 40% of Bangladesh, twice as much as in a typical year. The flooding displaced more than 9 million people, and nearly 200 lost their lives. Although we can't ascribe any single of these weather events to global warming, most scientists agree that droughts and floods will become more common as temperatures increase. When you see more intense droughts and more intense floods in lots of different parts of the world, sometimes simultaneously in the same place, this, this gives a window into the future as climate impacts get more dramatic and begin to accelerate. Not all that carbon dioxide rises into the atmosphere. Half of the CO2 we release into the air by burning fossil fuels, our oceans thankfully absorb. One problem, though, is that warmer water doesn't absorb gas nearly as well as cold water does which means as the Earth warms, more carbon dioxide is trapped in the atmosphere, and that could accelerate the warming of both the air and the sea. Sylvia Earle, a National Geographic explorer in residence, has been studying our oceans for the last 50 years. The ocean governs climate, governs temperature, 
without the ocean as the biggest sink for carbon, carbon dioxide, <laughs> well, without the ocean, the planet wouldn't work, period. Warmer oceans can cause problems on many levels, from mass fish die-offs to stronger hurricanes. But last year brought one other major risk factor to light. Warm water expands and causes sea levels to rise. The IPCC found that the oceans have been rising an average of 3.1 millimeters per year since 1993. At this rate, it warned, flooding could impact millions of people this century and wipe islands like the Maldives and Vanuatu off the map. Adding to the rise, our melting polar ice caps. Satellite images show temperatures have been rising faster here than anywhere else on the planet. And in the summer of 2007, the Arctic ice cap receded at a much higher rate than even the worst case scenarios predicted. Down to only 4.1 million square kilometers on September 16th. And that took a lot of scientists by surprise. And it's, it's not a surprise to anyone that it's melting, but the rapidity of it melting and the extent to which so much of it disappeared has, has shocked a lot of people. As a result of the record-setting ice melt, on August 21st, NASA satellites showed that the Northwest Passage, the long-sought Arctic shipping route, which has eluded explorers for centuries, was clear of ice. And to think about that actually starting to melt and starting to open up and and for those ice shields to start to disappear in your lifetime is like that that for me is just insanity the news seemed to usher in a new age of discovery as countries staked competing claims around the arctic a russian sub planted a flag below the north pole denmark sent an expedition to prove the pole is rightfully owned by greenland a danish province and Canada announced it would control shipping lanes and open two new Arctic military bases. And since the route cuts the journey between Asia and Europe by a third, shipping companies see the potential to save time and fuel, while oil companies are poised to search for more reserves. You'd think, oh wow, you know, this is, this is going to be an opportunity for people to say, oof, this is bad news. That's where his humanity disappoints. You know, we, we think and we act um, immediately on those proximal things, but uh, the important um, longer-term things, we ignore them. With so many of the Earth systems so intricately connected, and with so much of what we do affecting them, scientists say it's more important than ever that we understand how these systems work for our own sakes, as well as the rest of the species on the planet. Particularly when it comes to issues we can control, like carbon emissions. The carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere is largely taken up by the ocean, life in the ocean. Green things in the sea grab carbon dioxide, generate oxygen, they also generate food. But too much CO2 makes the oceans more acidic and more difficult for creatures, ranging from plankton to corals to build shells and skeletons. Ultimately, it causes them to dissolve. If CO2 emissions continue at the current rate, over the next few hundred years, researchers have calculated the oceans will become more acidic than they have in the last 300 million. Oceans provide humans with their largest source of protein, with as many as 3.5 billion people depending on it for their primary source of food. Last year, many fish stocks continued their decades-long decline. 